seem to be worrying about other things than what made me autistic. You know, they seem to be worrying about um, jobs and access to health care and access to education and no transition programs out of high school and falling off the cliff after high school. And why does no one ever talk about this stuff? Autistic people, uh, as I talk about my, bu my book, did not feel comfortable going to autism science conferences uh, for decades, a couple of decades, because they were tired of hearing themselves described as burdens upon their families. Don't ever accept dire predictions for your child made when the child is very young because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And that's even true if the child never acquires speech. Once people realize that they have natural strengths and natural, uh, you know, oftentimes we refer to autistic interests as obsessions. Well, you can also say that they're passions. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's a better word. What I discovered, and this is actually like, I think one of the biggest lessons in my book that is not talked about enough really is that the reason why those predictions were became standard was because autistic kids were put in institutions where they had no chance for right. education development. They were often subjected to bizarre treatments, you know, and everything from shock therapy to forced LSD. Perhaps shifting the paradigm to one in which instead of focusing so much on on measuring things to understand the causes of autism, which is more or less the paradigm right now in the scientific community, why don't we measure things to actually understand how to help, how to, how to build support and accommodation so that the person can uh, flourish and, and function, uh, be comfortable and so on. And I, I thought that one possible way to do that was to borrow from other fields in the, in the neurological um, community. These communities have uh, built accommodations and have built support and don't have a critical uh, view or, or a deficit model. They rather listen to the to the people that they're doing the research for. Something had gone wrong in the, in the transmission of autism history, uh, that somewhere along the line, we'd lost the plot really. Uh, and that the history of autism as recounted in thousands of textbooks and Wikipedia was incorrect. And as I researched, I discovered what mistakes had been made that in a sense rendered a huge population of autistic people invisible. We had a lot of catching up to do. And that's yeah. why I wrote Neurotribes, so that we could understand why things are so messed up now yeah. um, because of things that happened in the past and then had cascading effects down through the decades. It's often the neurodiversity people who are championing the needs of the most significantly disabled members, members of the community. So much good that is happening now in science even is because people are finally listening to autistic adults. 